you guys decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. What's up guys, it's Johnny. I want to say thank you to all of our subscribers. In this video, I'm going to give you a solid rundown on my slow pitch jigging technique. Sometimes you just have your day, and today was ours. We hit the ultimate trifecta, Wahoo, Black Grouper, and Cobia. Let's not forget, Tuna, Almaco Jack, Atlantic Bonito, and Bonita. Pass one more time. Push yourself to the limit. One more drop is our mantra. Fish with us, slow pitch with us, Yo, jig on. Uh, we just did a very long drift, jigging from 300 to 240. Um, we were a couple miles north of Boca Inlet and uh, we were just cruising back to the inlet. We wanted to jig around wreck up out here called the Hydro Atlantic but we just came across a weed line out here so John just dropped the jig and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this 60 gram lead casting jig called the circus freak out around these weeds see if I can't get something okay. so I just take this open my bail and wing it as far as I can let it hit the water Kind of hold the line to pull some of the scope out, but I'll sit here and I'll let this thing sink for 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Just let it sink for a little while, maybe get to 100 feet, start retrieving it. Tuna, Chris? Maybe you've been here. Nah, tuna. Ain't down, huh? He's not flipping around. Whoa! Oh, must have saw the boat. Mm. I see it. Underwater shot? Oh, it's a tuna. It's a tuna. Of course it is. Big tuna. saw this fantastic weed line in about 190 and we stopped and immediately I put on uh, this green super glow jig which is uh, glowing stripes on one side but it's got a scoop and a spoon on the other side because in these weed lines a lot of times you'll get juvenile um, dolphin mahi mahi and they're running around in there and there's a lot of predators that can't be in there so I put this green jig on I dropped it down Nothing got hit on the way down, but on the bottom I started uh, immediately getting hooked up. I got hooked up with a double um, blue runner, I got an Almaco, um, I've got a mackerel. I, I got all kinds of fish down there, but on my second or third drop, bam, I get hit down at the bottom. And I'm thinking I'm doubled up again on blue runner because it's, it's tugging. It's not like running and racing, but it's tugging every which way and I'm like, I'm doubled up again. We get it up to the surface, and lo and behold, it's a very nice sized cobia, big cobia. It's about four feet under the surface. We start screaming. All of a sudden, the thing skies in the air like a giant trout with a massive head shake and flings the jig out of its mouth. And there I am going, what the heck just happened? John went to grab the gaff and is running around the boat trying to gaff the thing, almost got it. We actually put the boat in gear and chased after a little bit, and it went down in. I was so shocked. Tip. 
Now for today's quick tip. I'm gonna get into a little bit about slow pitch technique. Now the first thing that I wanna talk about though is the meaning of the word pitch. So it has two meanings in slow pitch. It's either the turn of the handle, which you could do a quarter pitch, or you could do a half pitch, or you could do a full pitch. And then the second thing is the, um, the whole range of motion. So, so it would be either a short pull, a medium pull, or a long pull that you would do. So this isn't a, a perfect example because I'm not straight up and down. So ideally, I've, I've dropped my jig down and now I'm gonna get to a point to where I'm vertical on my jig. I'm gonna move over here to where I'm exactly vertical on my jig. And then I put those two things together in unison. So what I'm looking for really is I'm targeting the bottom right now and I'm looking for a nice even unload of my rod and I load the rod by doing the pitch and the handle. So I'm gonna give you just a little example of that now. But the idea is that I'm following my line down but leaving slack in it. Because if you're not leaving slack in your line, then your jig is just doing this in the water. But you want the jig to, to do the action it's designed to do, get sideways and flutter in whichever action that it does. So I'm gonna do a little, just a little example for you guys for a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll work it just like this. And then once I've got, if I'm, if I'm targeting fish on the bottom, what I do is I'll, after a few pitches, I release the bail, keep tension on the line, that way my jig falls faster, I drop back down to the bottom, and I continue. And I just keep working it. And the target zone, really, the ideal time is when the jig is vertical from your rod tip. So right now I'm in prime real estate for getting hooked up. My jig is doing the action it's designed to do, and uh, I feel pretty good about this spot right now. A couple videos ago, we did a quick tip about uh, hitting a wreck, and then, and then, dropping back down once you've drifted off the wreck uh, where you see a lot of mutton snapper holes. Uh -oh. Uh oh, we got Chris hooked up. Chris. Oh, now that's, now that's a drag puller. And I wasn't targeting a, a grouper at that point, but I, I hit bottom and we had heavy current today. And uh, what, what I was hoping for, once I hit the bottom, I was bouncing the bottom slowly and, and letting the jig flutter. I did about three pulls off the bottom once I, once I hit it and we had drifted north of the wreck at this point and, and I got hit uh, by something heavy and at that time Will was on a fish uh, also at the same time. Um, my fish took a big run and, and then he slowed down he was just doing head shakes every once in a while. Uh, Will ended up pulling in about an eight pound tuna and, and I just kept fighting my fish. It was, it was really, really heavy weight. All right, here we go. Blue, and then orange, and top shot. I see him. Oh yeah, we got color. Big boy. And we were pleasantly surprised when we saw a black grouper come to the surface. I was using the uh, one of our staple jigs, the 190 uh, Pink and Glow flat back. Unfortunately, this isn't the one that I was using because a few drops later I got owned by something on the wreck. You can find this jig in the link below. Nice. You know, we start, it started out a little bit slow, really. I just had, you know, that, that Bonito, I think I caught Bonita, and then I caught a Almaco, was it? And you know it was slow. You know Chris and Will weren't really hooking up much, and then, and then we found a little weed patch which started going off for us. And then we decided to just go for a dive for a little bit, and we got some lobsters in. And then after that dive, it was like it just it just turned on. The bite turned on, and and that hookup that I had. John just got slammed. How deep were you, John? Coming to me. How deep were you, John? Uh, I was about. 40 feet off the bottom. And what kind of jig are you using today? I 
I got the torpedo on. You see him scoped way out there on me? Uh, way out there. What color is it? It's a gold one. But, uh, man, he's way out that there. That thing slammed it, didn't it? Oh, yeah. He took a nap. I mean, just a big, big run on me. And, uh, now I'm scoped like straight out. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm straight out. Um, it, I mean, it took that run out on me that I've seen so many times before. Um, it beat Oahu and, and it's never been on my line, you know? So for me to, for me to have it on my line, I, I just wasn't believing it. You know, I, I always fight them like it's a good fish, but I really wasn't believing it. It feels good to be, you know, just out of the house and, uh, you know, we're blessed just to be able to be out here because I know that there's a lot of, um, you know, nurses and doctors that are, are first responders, first responders that are just working their tails off right now. And, and uh, you know, our, our heart goes out to them and, and uh, our prayers for them because, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're essentially saving America. You know, for me, I was like, this is a Bonito, this is a Bonita. It's not, it's not a Wahoo really was my thought. And then as he gets closer to the boat, you know, the great thing about it was, you know, my team, they're right there. You know, Chris is pulling in the sea anchor. He's got the gap right there. Will's working the camera. He's right there with me moving rods and things of that nature, you know. And we always fight it like it's something good. You know, we don't, we don't give up. We don't give up. Picture of that. Still going. Nice. Still going. So on my, on my, uh, Accurate 500 narrow. There's a little click that lets me know right where I like to be on my drag, and uh, I'm still there. So I can I can tighten down on him a little bit no more. I know that, and still be okay. But this is really the sweet spot for me. Oh, it's the color. And as the thing got close to the boat, you know, Will shouts out, you know, it's a wahoo, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me because Chris just pulled up a black grouper, and I'm like, there's no way that that we've had a cobia, a black grouper, and a wahoo all in the same day. I caught some silver with some stripes, John. I think you have a, a wahoo. That's awesome. Oh my God, it's a wahoo. It's a wahoo. Right, ready. And when that thing got close, I didn't care where Chris gaffed it. You're supposed to gaff it closer to the head. That's okay, Chris. You got him in the boat. First gaff shot, and that was freaking awesome, man. Let's stick that fish. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Woo! What a day, bro! What a day! Yes! Sorry for getting the meat. I told yes. you I thought it was a Wahoo, man. Yes! Cobia, whoa! <laughs> I'm so finally. I am you got it. I am so stoked, man. I am so stoked. Look at this, guys. Look at this wahoo on the Johnny Jig, man. God, I I have been I've had so many wahoo caught all the way around me on the jig. And, and I've just been waiting for this moment. And God, couldn't pick a better day. Wow. I am, uh, like I'm, I'm almost a little bit emotional because it was just so epic for me to get a Wahoo on the slow pitch jig is something that I've been dying to do. And I accomplished that today. It was huge.